I did the button push, so hello. We're back with uh, the Outer Worlds. With, uh, I forgot again what it's called. Um, uh, Murder on Eridanus, that was what it was called. Just such a simple title. Terror on Gorgon, murder on Eridanus. Ammo, thank you. We used some for those terror raids, rays. There's another one. There's some drilling equipment. Okay, this looks interesting. Um, so yeah, and we were told to speak with Bellhop Owens, who we see here is, uh, totally well. He's just taking a nap. There's a bit cartridge, and here's an invoice. A list of guest special requests. Some drinks, some food items, and tellingly, a recently fulfilled request for a fresh... Terror Ray Bile Gland from one Spencer Woolrich. Oh. So that's what he gave him, apparently. So I guess Spencer basically poisoned himself as an alibi. Let's save and. Uh, oh. Okay. It's a really nice view here. I love this idea for a... You know, for a... Floating... Rocket-powered islands in the upper atmosphere. I, I didn't realize, because we've been on meteors with like a... Um, force field slash dome around it that kept the atmosphere in. So I didn't even think that the reason they're floating at exactly this alt al uh, altitude, sorry, altitude, hard word, um, is of course that they are, that this is the area that has a breathable atmosphere, which is seems really clever. Oh, hello. Hosty. Just wanted to make you smile. I love that they keep yelling while uh, shouting. All right. That doesn't sound too good. you hear these sounds, I think there will be more Site 451 safe keycard. Oh, hello, little guys. What are you doing? Just standing there? Wait, didn't we have a light somewhere? to see, but they're still there. Okay. Come on. All 
right, but one of them ran away. That's not good. So I think there will be more. Uh, wait, I walked back. Huh. So... I guess our job is to confront Spencer. Okay, someone started digging down here, and I guess found them. Oh, and they... Ah, you just ran out. Why is it running away? Fascinating that they run away. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I thought it was like I got turned around in the cave. Being all dark and all. And I thought, you know, there was a way. Uh, you know, where the... Uh, that would lead us to like a mama... Parasite or something. Okay, so uh, we can confront Woolrich, and we know now that he probably just tried to give himself an alibi. Okay, and we still need to go to the Productivity Queen, who, interestingly, Spencer talked to, he said. So my guess is that that's the person we'll be dealing with, that that's the actual villain that we haven't even met yet. Isn't that an exciting way? of doing a game, giving you the opportunity to not meet the enemy for s such a long while. Boing, 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 boing. Ooh, Mr. Spencer. Hello, Spencer. I'm not sure if anyone remembers that it was a German kids TV show, so probably one person in chat or something. <laughs> Aha! Always so nice to hear you, Inspector. I'll get you to your floor on the double. Wait, who was Sullivan? Was that you? Me? Oh yes. my! How exciting to see you again. This truly has been a day to end all days. I could die happy. Anything you'd like to discuss? You know anything about Bellhop Owens? The chef was talking about him. Owens? I hardly spot him. Generally, he's at Mr. Woolrich's beck and call. Fetching this or that, helping with his room, and providing as his acting partner far more often than not. Ooh, that was strange. I've never felt quite as pleased as I just was to be tasked with working this elevator for 16 hours every day. All right. Oh, so maybe the bellhops cut meant 
Owens. Aha! Next stop. The uh, no, wait. Ah, uh, wrong, wrong, wrong. <clears throat> we'll have to have this conversation again. Aha! Always so nice. VIP guest floor. Be sure to get an autograph for me. Oh, just joking. I've already got one. Yeah, we heard that already. It's a cool idea, though, that they... That this quest... The other one, the first DLC, was... What was it? Like, two, three new... Lo well, three new planets. Not just locations. Um, and um, a few buildings in the existing galaxy. Um for Terra on Monarch, which was kind of nice. And now this, um, with the, with the hotel, basically, you know, you're under lockdown in this hotel, so everything happens here. And I actually like that, that, that they gave you, but I guess it's the lockdown. I forgot that for a second. Like, I thought, hey, it's just a cool idea to have a second space where you can swap out companions and things like that. But of course, it totally makes sense since this planet is under lockdown, so we can probably not fly away. Please, can't you see my heart is bursting at the seams? I absolutely must go out! A quote from the Sisty Cutlet. I voiced a Sisty Pig aware that it was going to be slaughtered. Ask me anything at all. I might even give you a straight answer. I think that was in the Hitchhiker's Guide of the Galaxy, wasn't it? The the food happy to be eaten. I've learned a thing or two about your activities in the hotel. Oh, have you now? Please do go on. Uh, uh, don't leave me in suspense. I have security footage of you tampering with Helen's last meal. Tampering? No, no, no. I just happened to be passing through the kitchen and saw a dish that looked good. If being hungry is a crime, you better indict three-fourths of Halcyon. That, ah, that was in such bad taste. Might as well have said, let them eat cake. Uh, so, quick question. What was it you wanted with a terror ray bile gland? What? That damned bellhop promised discretion. Well, if you must know, it's, um, an appetite suppressant. How do you think I keep my form so lithe? Terror ray glands keep me from feeling hunger pangs. If the terror ray gland was an appetite suppressant, you shouldn't be hungry if you took it. Oh, uh, well, there's... Maybe I just wanted to see what was in it. Oh, law, what a pathetic defense. Mm -hmm. As it so happens, I may not have had the terror ray gland acquired for personal use. I, I may have placed it in Bellamy's meal. But before you indict me, please, just listen. I wasn't trying to kill her. So you lied about being poisoned. Lie is such a strong word. But even if I had chosen to poison myself, the danger should have been minimal. Terror ray glands aren't supposed to be lethally poisonous. They're supposed to cause extreme lethargy, as if you'd inhaled several quarts of spectrum vodka. She would have had to eat six or seven of the glands to die, and even then it would be an extended, arduous process. I don't really like that he knows that, you know, that he knows, okay, don't give her six glands or you kill her. That's good. But um, that he then says it would have been an extended, arduous process. Um, that doesn't really make him sound good. You really seem like a toxicologist, or maybe you played one on the Aetherwave. No, really. You must listen. 
I wasn't trying to kill Bellamy. I only wanted her to be incapacitated during the Brown unveiling. With her out of commission, the next available celebrity, myself, would get to host the unveiling. Please think twice about telling the administrator of my misdeeds. If he learns the truth, what's left of my career will be left in shambles. <laughs> Maybe I'll flip a bit card. That's like... No, flipping a coin, yeah, but like... You don't flip your entire wallet. These things aren't that small. What would you want me to say instead? Tell him, uh, tell him it was a, a poisonous mushroom or a bite from some poisonous insect. An accident. I promise I shall make up for my actions. Pay to erect a statue in Helen's honor, or perhaps even dedicate a performance to her memory. I'll keep you in suspense. It's more fun that way. My law, if you aren't a sadist. If I have a coronary before you make your decision, I will do my utmost to haunt you. That's the least you could do. Jeez. Okay. He's a piece of work. Seriously. Okay, and now we're supposed to report to Ludovico, I guess. Well, I don't think... Aha! Always so next stop. The finest seat in the house. I don't think he killed her, so there's that. Because... You know, like, it's true. I think we already know that she was shot with that gun and not poisoned. Inspector? Huh, I looked into Cedric. Oh, and I've completed investigation into the poisoning. Wait, um... Let's save here in case we do something wrong and don't get to choose what we want to say and what we don't. Inspector? I've completed my investigation into Helen's poisoning. Excellent. I trust you have a name for our poisoner. Spencer Woolrich confessed to the crime. Oh, I am disappointed. I'd always believed Mr. Woolrich a man of high character. It pains me to order the arrest and detention of someone I admired. I'd like you to continue investigating Helen's murder. You've found the poisoner, but her killer remains at large. Okay. I looked into Cedric. Closely, I trust. Tell me what you found. Hmm. I didn't find much to build a case, I guess. Cedric's a slippery guy. I didn't find much to build a case. That doesn't surprise me. Cedric practically stole his way to Eridanos. He'll do everything in his power to keep you off his trail. With that in mind, do you think Cedric was responsible for Helen's death? was torturing a guy at the time of Helen's death. I can't see past that alibi. I mean, that's what he said. But yeah, I think he's making money. I think that was truth. So let's just take his answer for the truth. Helen was making money for Cedric. I doubt he has a motive for killing her. No motive. That's disappointing, because it's exactly the conclusion he'd want us to make. 
Unfortunately, even I don't have the authority to detain Cedric. His line of work is dangerous, though. There's always a chance for an accident. Sorry to disappoint you. He's alive and well. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I've already lost Dr. Blossom and Constable Keen, but at least Cedric's alive. The universe is a just place. I'll be back. Okay, and now we're actually... Wait, I want to know what this would say right now. I don't think... I think this is the point where we'll save Scum. Because um, I don't know who killed Helen Inspector? yet. So let's you see. Confident? You've finished your investigation. You've questioned all... You no, okay, I need more time. Yeah, then... Then let's just go down... Exit the Grand Colonial and see what we can do and go into the Wilderness Reserve. Oh, wait, who do we have with us right now? Oh, no, wait. I think for the Wilderness Reserve, we need our bestest hunters. Aha! Oh, wait, next stop. All right. Let's uh -huh. go out again. Oh, and uh, do we want to take Parvati along? Let's take Ellie and Nioka. I think that sounds like a good team for going into the wilderness. Of course, uh, we might have luck and find a secret base with lots of science stuff. You know how things like that go. All right. Where do you find the profit of profitability? So, how do we get there? Oh, what's this? Anyone else want to camp out in that hunting reserve instead of staying in the penthouse? No? Just me? All right. <laughs> it really is stunning. I told you, didn't I? The view's fit to stop one's heart. Really? Considering the circumstances, that's the euphemism you decide to use? Ooh. I'm I'm sad that we can't use any of these. Oh. Someone left us a tip apparently. I'm thinking of reserving a wilderness safari. Wear a fancy hat, fire a rifle, murder some wildlife, you know. It could be quite scintillating. A rifle. <laughs> the last time you tried to hold a firearm, you dropped it down a flight of stairs, triggered its automatic fire, and wounded 13 hotel employees. Well, I didn't hit anyone important. Come on, I won't mess anything up this time. Boing. Do, 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 do. All right, we can do this. Those trees popped into view rather abruptly. It is pretty, though. Too bad we didn't get to talk to Bellhop Owens. Doodly do dee do dee do dee do dee do 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 do. Oh, interesting. There's an elevator and another bit of uh, popping in of assets. Huh. Huh. This is the 
the sign on the superhero front plate for Burbage 3000. That this, and I think that's a laundry cart, isn't it? So were there like kids from the from the hotel? Wilderness Exploitation Reserve. Oh. Well, I guess I have the people with all the big guns. Daltry Ranger. Canid Meat. Oxycomp Aromatic. Oh, you have Adrena. Oh, it's Adrena time, not Adreno. Whatever was shot here. Nice work. Had some good gear with it. Hmm, armor parts not really needed. Huh. But there are a lot of dead people down here. How did they even get down here? Did the cannons come down with the... Oh! I guess someone delivered cannons. Huh. Alright. That makes sense, then that would explain they wanted to transport them up, I guess, and the... Oh, it fell down. Oh, maybe that's the story. This is Silvio Tran, setting a new record for the Grand Colonial Bellhops Laundry Cart League. If you're listening to this, you're listening to history. And Tall Tree, as we agreed, when I win, you're scraping terror shit off the windows for the rest of your contract. And you can stow the fear of heights routine because there's no way you're weaseling out of that, pal. Here goes. That's... Move the box! No, not... No! All right, so... I'm not quite getting what happened. So that's one of the laundry carts that they were racing, I guess. And I guess they came from here. And maybe some of them got shot up here and... Silvio Tron. Okay, that's the dead guy. So he somehow got whacked into that box. Oh, so that's it. He, I guess, rammed into that box and fell out. So this didn't fall on him when they transported it or something. Okay. Oh, what's this? Exploration Authority Helm. Okay. Some unauthorized street racing going on here. Not that good. Huh. That seems... Rather low. You can teleport well. Oh, I guess we have a ring around the planet. Fancy. All right. I 
guess that weep 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 sound was a rat. Some more sublight. Yes, it was that rat. Okay. All right. Grand Colonial. There's a lot of money just lying around in boxes here. But I guess we can not be faulted for taking some of this. Was that a tarot ray? This looks nice. What did this originally say? Wilderness... Something... Oh, hell yes! Show me the biggest, baddest wildlife you've got, Eridanos. I'll bring it home on a plaque. Sir... Bented? What does that say? Maybe we can see it... on the back? No. It definitely said something else, originally. Wilderness Reserve... Herbanized? Huh, I can't, can't read it, sorry. Anyway... It's interesting, I expected them to just straight up, you know, have come up with uh, a wilderness exploitation reserve. Legal hunting supplies. Okay. Excuse me, Gunther, I need to ask you something. Who in the hell is Gunther? I told you to call me Hunter. Come on. All oh, right. G uh, Hunter, have you seen a little mechanical wandering through here? Might have been wearing my hat. I can't say I have. I can sell you a new hat if you want. Or some fine, legally obtained hunting supplies. You could go get that mechanical thief yourself. She's not a thief. She's lost. I just want her back. Oh, hey there, stranger. Don't mean to interrupt your business, but uh, have you seen a stray mechanical wandering about? Uh, I overheard your conversation earlier. You want to explain exactly what's happening? Seems I'm running my mouth too much. My mechanical Betty up and wandered away a couple days back. I've been trying to track her, but the beasts make it hard. Personally, I prefer my organs inside my body. The shopkeep says I should buy one of his rifles and go looking myself, but like my machine, I'm not combat inclined. What kind of mechanical is your lost charge? Betty's just your standard tripod mechanical, though she probably is still wearing my hat. <laughs> Without it, she seems kind of naked. Her main purpose is cacao milking, but the only cacaos in the reserve are close. Without a directive, she shouldn't have had reason to wander away from the milking area. Like those boat buckets need a reason to do anything. It's probably searching the world for more things to milk. Wouldn't make any sense. Ain't no cacaos out there. Betty's smarter than that. I didn't think mechanicals could just wander off on their own. I'm contractually obligated to inform you that slug mechanicals are not notoriously inclined to malfunction, and any rumors to the contrary are slander. But, yeah, usually even slug machines don't get lost on their own, so I guess I'm to blame. Setting Betty's search parameters is my job. Must have added a zero where I shouldn't have. 
Are you sure? Mechanicals malfunction, but all this feels a little unusual. Hey, I ain't in the habit of intentionally losing company property. That'd be one hell of a violation. Besides, I'm rather fond of Betty. This is all just an unfortunate cycle of events. If you can help rectify it and get me my Betty back, I'll give you everything I got. I'll keep my eye out for any suspicious mechanicals. Thanks so much. It would have been mighty lonely without her. Uh, being unemployed, I mean. Be lonely being unemployed. <laughs> if you find Betty, try sneaking up and hacking her. If you can't do that, finding a way to stop her current routines should send her back home. Oh, so, uh... I mean, we've specced into hacking, but my problem is I've never really figured out how to trigger it. Dissident Queen Chapter 3. Halcyon, Halcyon Helen commits regicide. Didn't we read that already? Yeah, Hephaestus Harry. Yep, we already read that. Oops. Why is that everywhere? Wait, you're a tour you guide? Head back into the hotel. <laughs> That's a good suggestion from a tour guide. Welcome to Hunter Legal's Legal Hunter Supplies. I am Hunter Legal. How might I help you today? That's why she's always calling him Gunter. That's probably his original name, and then somebody went, Hey, change your name. And so they're just Hunter Legal's supplies. They're probably neither proper hunter supplies nor very legal I'm investigating the murder of Halcyon Helen have you seen or heard anything unusual lately unusual this whole land complex is a failed wildlife exhibition turned hunting reserve you can't go 10 feet without stepping in unusual but I reckon you're asking about people unusual I'd go have a chat with the prophet of profitability Maybe she can intuit you in the right direction or something. But she is mighty far in the depths of the reserve. Perhaps you should purchase one of my fine armaments for the journey. Interesting name your shop has. I'm sure I don't know what you mean. It is a perfectly normal name for a shop dispensing hunter supplies. Do you mean hunting supplies, like the sign above your shop says? No, these are supplies for hunters. <laughs> Hunter supplies. It works either way. I... It works either way. Boy, damn it. I wish I thought to get that sign switched out when I changed my name. Is this really the best place for a shop? better to sell hunter supplies than in the depths of the wilds surrounded by creatures that are just waiting to devour you I've got an excuse but the prophet and her retreat don't and they're even farther out prophet said I should gift her some rifles to improve my aura or something I told her what she could do with her aura haven't spoken to her since but you look like you're smart enough to not make the decision that she'll invariably regret. Let's see what you're selling. Hunter supplies. Get your hunter supplies. All right. What do you have on offer? Anything I necessarily want? Don't think so. No super special items either. Well, I guess we can repair all. That might be a good idea. Um... I think we're good here, so let's see what else we can do. Ooh, what's in this box? 
Nothing really worth stealing. Lawrence McLaughlin. Sorry, but we're a little busy right now. I'm sure one of the other guys would be happy to give you a tour. Lawrence, do you know who you're talking to? We always have time for the inspector. The inspector? That's you? I... I am so sorry. We didn't know what we were doing. We're so sorry. It'll never happen again. This seems like a strange spot to loiter. What are you two doing? The law... It's all over. I told you someone would catch on sooner or later, Belle. Lawrence, let me do the talking here. Inspector, pay him no mind. I'm sure you've bigger saltuna to can than us. What did he mean by catch on? Don't pay him any mind, Inspector. His upper story's a little gap tooth, if you know what I mean. But seeing as you insist on sticking your... That is, since you're so curious, I'll fill you in on what we're doing. We, uh misplaced some people on our last tour misplaced them in the maws of some local predators now we're stuck here wondering how to get their room keys you got your guests killed and all you care about are their room keys hey we all got our priorities not worrying about those keys ain't gonna bring their owners back from the dead Anyway, the sooner we get those keys back, the sooner we can make it look like the ex-guests checked out early. You're trying to cover up the deaths of the missing guests. Give me one good reason I shouldn't sell you out to the constabulary. Here's one. We ain't done nothing illegal. The guests signed the proper waivers to come out here. Still, it'd be a pain for Slug if we don't make it look like they checked out too. Byzantines aren't always put off by paperwork alone, sadly. We knew sooner or later this was gonna happen. We've got some hush money tucked away. If you can get those keys for us, it's all yours. It's always in this game. It's always, um, you know, that's the difficulty here that, um, it's probably true. You know, those people signed legal waivers and nobody involved in their deaths would probably be persecuted anyway. And so, You know, the question is, is if we sold them out, what would really happen? Um, and, you know, usually, you know, it the people who pay are the workers. Like, they have to pay if one of their colleagues commits suicide in this weird world. It's, you know, they, um, it's not... Um, the boss who made that person overworked and didn't give them time off to see a psychiatrist or something like that. Um, say I got your keys. What's to stop me from telling your bosses what happened? You kidding? You're welcome to. Our bosses would want this situation resolved, just like us. We're the real victims here. The dead can't suffer anymore, but we can, and we will, if we have to pay for all these lost keys. Okay, I'll find those Did keys for you. The inspector is going to help us, Bill! Thank the stars! We're not out of the woods yet. Let's just see what happens before we celebrate. We last saw the guests deeper in the wilderness, Inspector. That'd be a good place to look. I'll be back when I find those keys. But yeah, this is how... how Halcyon works. It's... If you get someone killed, you better pay for the lost work... power that they represent. 
and not, uh, you know, be accountable for what you do. Um, I'll not ask for guests. Their mistake. Don't mess with us. All right. Those are just cannons, so let's look. Yep. There's a bunch of dead hotel guests somewhere over there. Ooh, and what's this? It's a cave with a river. She's a river. Do 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 do. Don't even know what that song is about. Huh. All right, let's grab some of the loot. Such a big box, and then there's no but nothing in it. Okay, that's just a path we can go through, apparently. Weird, it looked like that bin contained some sort of armor parts or something. Oh, hunters, okay. This looks a lot like one corner in Edgewater. Wonder why they put lights on our armor? No, Trooper. What about these tubes poking out everywhere? No, Trooper, stop asking stupid questions. Sorry, Commander. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that doesn't really make sense for if it's not outer space. So, oh, there's a building somewhere over there. Let's check that out. Oh. Oh my god, and there's a Monty Swarm as well. This doesn't really look healthy. Ah! Ouch. Whoops. Come on, let me shoot you. Yes. Time for a drink. Are we done? Should probably heal ourselves. Ugh. Took a bit of damage there. Do you have anything interesting? No, just animal parts. Abandoned restaurant, okay. So that's what the nature reserve originally was, I guess. Kind of interesting, given this galaxy is kind of uh, resource-starved. How many abandoned places you can find. But I guess, you know, they probably don't abandon anything if it's just dangerous. So, uh, totally makes sense that at the point where they abandon something. It's so dangerous that they've probably lost a bunch of people. Why is water dripping off this rock? Huh. That seems like... seems rather wasteful. Like something... I don't know, is there, like, condensation water? Ooh. Nice 
Whoops. Damn it. That's the last of them. This machine gun is really nice. Except that it needs to reload occasionally. Which kind of for a machine gun that has to spin up seems rather... You know, why can't they just keep it spinning while it's reloading? I can hear them. Oh god, primals? <laughs> I was just thinking like, okay, this is the shortest way to get to this dead hotel guest, but then... What the heck? Primals? And... Uh, I guess... Ugh, can I go up there? Come on. Almost. Eh, eh. No, I guess not. Let's see. I think we've got past the primals. Oh wait, one of them was actually right near where we started. Okay. I guess we've got a key card. And I mean, there are only people from Byzantium. So, uh, it's not as if I feel too guilty. about not being able to do anything. Huh. This is one of those terraforming devices we see on, saw on the other planet, isn't it? Ah, you have such a cute smile, you little canid, you. Candy canyons. get all of them? Looks like it. Uh. And we've got a bunch of ammo from you. That's nice. Wrapped it on. And, I mean, we, we've heard the people before, the, the ones on the, on the panorama platform. Pseudo-feral forest. Okay. What? Who are you shooting? Oh. this really and flaws okay oh another manti queen or mantisaur or whatever the generic term for all of those is They oh, that's where they get water from? Okay, fascinating. I guess they're...
pumping water. That looks a bit more like a fancy desert. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Wait, where is it? Oh. What's this? Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Ooh, analyze. Semi-recent set of tracks in the dirt stands out from the dead leaves and those made by passing creatures. Identifying human footprints leading out into the wilderness. It is unusual for productivity disciples to wander more than a few feet from the camp. Are they Helens? Scanning. No. Helens' distinctive shoe size not found. Judging by footprint depressions and shoe size, these prints were either made by the Prophet of Profitability or adjutant Sophia Akande. Error. Recalibrating. These footprints were made by the Prophet of Profitability. Why did it just revise its opinion? Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Detected additional tracks belonging to the profit of profitability. Oh, maybe the profit of profitability. Discrepancy detected nearby. Judging by the shape of this indentation in the dirt, a person of medium height and build laid here for a number of hours, scanning for other details. Only additional signs of disturbance are a few marks in the dirt. Corpses don't get up and walk away, and there's no evidence of the body being torn apart. Agreed. Likely theory. Individual injured was unconscious, not dead, and walked away after awakening. Strange. Okay. Strange. Let keep th let's keep this in mind. We can also go paranoid. Right. This is pretty and different scenery than we've had before. Which is kind of cool that there's actually a little desert spot here. Oh, hello, sir. Ah, there are your friends. Okay. Okay. What do you have for us? You just died here, okay. Uh, I guess the overlap I saw was the hotel guest. Ooh, what's this? Last words of Howard A. Kinsella. Though my wounds are fatal, I, as a Byzantine, must face my death with the same dignity with which I lived my life. I hereby enclose the events leading to my demise. A tragic turn of fate separated me from my guides. The duo fled as our party encountered a single raptidon, the cowards. I, however, drew my rifle and felled the beast, but not before it sank its teeth into my flesh. I imagine I must have been the finest thing it had ever tasted in this wretched place. Perhaps my guides will find me before I pass, though I doubt those simpletons could find their way out of a cardboard box. I believe their names were Larry and Bell or something similarly mundane. To whoever finds this, please carry out my final wish. Pass on my rating of one out of five stars to the Grand Colonial. Guides were very unhelpful. Sincerely, Howard A. Kinsella. I 
guess a scathing Yelp review is kind of what you would expect. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing out here. I'd rather be over at the cantina. Oh, did they find a few survivors? You know, I never imagined Spencer Woolrich would outlive Halcyon Helen. I can't believe Helen's gone. We're never going to get a sequel to Terror on Monarch. It's kind of... Um, what I've wondered is the whole thing about her companions not living long. Uh, you know, given Tossball has actual... Hi. Hi, Snakey. You're not doing anything. I guess we can leave you be then. These cactuses kind of look like... Well, this one... Really doesn't look like a cactus. I wonder if those are supposed to be inflatable or something. Um, so I wonder if in Helen's movies, you know, they have, you know, live ammo and uh, her co-stars actually died. And Woolrich was just one who actually managed to be in many movies without getting himself killed. Oh, okay. Where's the last one? Okay. You got him. Good. Nothing better than companions who actually know how to shoot. Why do the others have hunting rifles and he's he's got a stun baton? That seems weird. What's this? Smuggled cargo, and that's lost little milk meth. <laughs> Mech, sorry. Oh. Then I guess we'll turn in the mission to these two already because we're nearby. Armor, oh, it's armor parts, not weapon parts. Oh wait, what is this? It's not actually where I thought we were, I guess. All right. But anyway, yeah, I mean, in this world, I wouldn't be surprised. Whoops. Uh -huh. That was close. Um, if her co-actors actually died. And then, of course, the whole comment about I didn't e expect Spencer Woolrich to outlive her would have a even different meaning. On the other hand, you know, he is older than she is. Like it was mentioned a couple of times, uh, a younger actress and things like that. So uh, it could have just been a normal comment. Whoops. Audio just clicked for me. I don't know if you heard that. I guess probably because uh, I think I'm hearing the 
I'm hearing the through um I'm hearing it on the recording machine after all. Uh that tourist is just walking around here alone. Okay. Okay, these are the legal hunting supplies. Then this is where you are. Hey there. You find us those keys? Oh, that would be mean. You can sell it. Tell them to just go into the canyon and hide them there. I have That's them right here. Them. You're a lifesaver and a half, Inspector. Lawrence, you got the bits? Let's see, which pocket did I... Oh, they're in my hand. Here you are, Inspector. We'll make sure to put in a good word with our friends, too. I can't wait to put this behind us. What are you going to do now? We'll wait here a little longer. And start clearing out their rooms when the shift changes. Not sure what we'll do with their belongings. Lawrence, we talked about this, remember? What belongings? Anyhow, thanks again, Inspector. Good luck with your investigation. <laughs> what belongings? Well, the ones you're selling on the other island, of course. All right, so now somewhere over there. How oh, can we go in there? Is there anything? Oh, that's the shop. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> doodly doodly do, doodly doodly do. Find Betty. Whoa, find Betty. Wham a lamb. Whoa, find Betty. Wham a lamb. Robo Betty had a child. Wham a lamb. A happy cacao. I wonder. Oh, she's trying to. Wait, what? What happened? Do we just fail the quest? Because we killed Betty's cacaos or what? No cacaos detected nearby. Returning to slug maintenance worker. Yes. Okay. That sounds good. All right. So I guess we've got the robot back. So let's go back to you la 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 we still haven't met the prophet of profitability hey i almost can't believe it betty found her way back here I was, thinking I'd never see her again. One malfunctioning mechanical, as promised. She was trying to milk canids. Oh, Betty, you big goof! What were you thinking in that little metal noggin of yours? You nearly worried me to death! And you, ain't you just the most reliable freelancer in the colony? Let me just take a look at Betty here and we'll talk about payment. Yep, that's right. Her parameters for movement and target acquisition are a mess. I'll bring her back to the garage and get her sorted out. Since Betty's back safe and sound, I'll be sure to let my co-workers know that you're a good one. Here's some money for your effort. Least I can do to show my thanks. <laughs> Don't 
let any cannons nip you on the way out. Uh, yeah, all right then. <laughs> I won't. All right, and what did we get? Other buddy? Oh, that's a science weapon. Used to tighten a specific hard-to-see bolt on Happy Dale Farms milking assemblies. This wrench is strongly magnetic. Just stick it near the bolt and the wrench seats itself. Okay. So it's a magnetic improvised science weapon or what? Weird. Okay. I wonder what that will do. We haven't even used the other science weapon. And of course it wants us to do main quest again. But we are on the DLC. Sorry. Productivity. Alright. Let's see if we can find this famed prophet of profitability. Huh. Okay. It's kind of interesting. I mean, it's... It's, uh... You know, it's kind of typical for Halcyon that uh, what they do is when you run around here is that one sleeping? yes okay so now we know what would have happened uh, if we had sent them here they would probably have ended up slightly deaded. Mr. Zap, energy cell, heavy ammo. Um, what was I about to say? Um, I don't get it. Why build a place to get dust up your nose and wrapped it on spit in your eyes when Monarch's free to visit? It ain't free, that's why. You need a ship and a smuggler? Also, this place doesn't reek of fish and sulfur, so they've got that going for them. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's typical that, you know, they they wanted to do like a showcase of animals realized they couldn't do it and then went like hey we can pay for people to hunt here in the ruins oh that colossus wait 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 Let's melee you. Let's see what that does. Oh, that works well. Huh. Okay, that wasn't too impressive, but uh, it's a fun little weapon, and at least it was much more effective. Huh. What are these areas? Are those former cages? Former KGB agents? No, wait. Um. Well, I guess that's the compound. Join us for the Profit of Profitability Seminar. Now, why do I think this will be a total letdown? Who this prophet of profitability will be? It will probably be some, I don't know, tiny accountant? I don't know. No one looking very prophetic, you know.
Okay, nobody needs this many candles. Yeah, that looks a little... Also not very well... Uh, um, you know, not very fancy. Prophet Disciple Daily Schedule 5 Awaken 5 to 12 Praise the Prophet Listen to the Prophet 12 to 2 Sweat House Meditation Oh, that's what those little tents over there were supposed to be 2 to 2.02 2 Lunch 2.02 to 4 Hot Cold Training 4 to 5 Stomach Purging 5 to 5.02 oh, Imagine 2 minutes for meals. 502 to 6 stomach purging. Like entire hours. 6 to 8 medical attention. 8 to 10. Wait, wait, wait. So if they burn themselves during the hot cold training, medical attention is from 6 to 8. 8 to 10, clean the retreat. 10 to 12, beatings by prophet. 12 to 12 or 1, free time. 12 or 1 to 2, disciples choice. Self-flagellation or meditation on productivity followed by no food next day. 2, sleep. So from 2 to 5, 3 hours of sleep. Jesus. I mean, it's Halcyon. I'm not surprised. Chrono field aggregator. Like a rock among the rocks. <laughs> Hi. Well, that doesn't look good. The sprats are already in the food. Okay, that's just one of those head things. There's a rather big hole here. I'm not stealing three bits, come on. Backpack mod. Weapon parts. Oh, definitely stealing weapon parts. Those are kind of rare. Kinematic shield drip. Weapon parts. Oh, I can't. Okay. I'm not good enough, apparently. But I can crack those doors. By imagining wealth, I can evoke prosperity out of the universe. Right. Two minutes of food really sounds like a... Not a good spot. And... Have campfires here. I don't think they have any power. Or maybe I don't know. Hmm. Why do they have so many skulls? That makes me a little suspicious. You know, if you remember, one of the strategies that cults use is that they have two classes of members. So one is the regular member who is being exploited, like you would expect from a cult. 
and then you have the you know the kind of PR members that are supposed to go out there and kind of missionary do missionary work for them and uh oh All right, that doesn't look good. I guess that's how they all become so productive. Um, and anyway, so I wonder if Woolrich and uh, I think it was Woolrich who actually, who Helen commented about you know like uh, yeah that's that's something silly that he does um going to this profit of profitability um so it would totally make sense if he was one of those you know for show members that you know only get to see positive sides and then the rest of the members live here and uh, I don't know get killed in the end or whatever it totally makes sense it's not good enough to be better than everyone I need to believe I'm better than everyone Welcome. If you are in search of a seminar, please speak to the Prophet of Profitability directly. The messages on this terminal are private. Should you read them, your humor is maybe thrown off balance. Is your curiosity worth the loss of profits? Humors is actually a Middle Ages idea of medicine where they thought about some sort of balance. So, uh... Happy to know that that term is making a combat here to indicate this is really not science or anything like that. From Ruth Bellamy. Ooh, Prophet, I've talked with my agents and they've told me that what I said about your seminars, re not taking them, actually lost you about 30% of your revenue for the next three months, with future losses projected. When I said I wasn't much interested in attending, I didn't really realize that I'd hit you quite as hard as it did. Guess that's the price of stardom. Everyone listens a little extra to everything you said. I'm hoping, if you've got space, that I might be able to attend one of your sessions today as a means of apologizing. I know that notice is short, but I'm hoping you can fit me in without too much inconvenience. Okay, that was what she was investigating, I guess. Hey, Prophet Whitaker here. Wanted to ask you how that mix of herbs I sent you has worked out. I was skeptical at first about using them for meditation purposes, but hey. Um, but hell, what do I know about productivity? That said, be sure to remember what I told you. Don't cut the herbs asymmetrically, hampers the texture. Don't leave them out in the sun, and for the law's sake, make sure you keep the smoke doses small. Last thing you want is to accidentally send somebody into a coma, or worse, kill them. Be smart, Whitaker. Okay. Who is this Whitaker? Was that the drug guy that Bertie talked to? What was his name? Something like Oleg or something, I don't remember. From your devoted attendees. Prophet, the other attendees of Tripling Profits Through Transcendentalism and I have reconvened, and we're all in agreement. Your seminars are simply top-notch. We've seen a 0.5% increase in each of our businesses in total profits since we attended your seminar together. Of course, with the price of materials, shipping, and other costs involved, it boils down to more of a 0.1% increase, but an increase is an increase. If you ever decide to visit the Grand Colonial, you simply must let us purchase you a round of drinks. Thanks to you, we certainly have the bits for it. 
All right. That sounds like a, a glitch in the measurements. Okay, let's quickly sell our junk here. And right, let's see if we picked, I think I picked up something accidentally. Whoops, ouch. It's this fly in here that keeps flying into my head. <laughs> well. Oh, and that's the coal. I don't think they actually pull off the meditation and walk over glowing coals. Where is the discrepancy? Oh, there was something. Is it out there? Huh, somewhere in that corner? Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Analysis suggests this to be a variety of herbs. Herbs have been uniformly treated with a pungent chemical mix. Warning, ingesting, smoking, or inserting non-corporation sanctioned substances into your ears may be harmful to your health. Burning these would generate some pretty toxic smoke. Side effects from extended exposure include dizziness, nausea, and unconsciousness. Additional likelihood of organ shutdown and or death. Discrepancy amplifier. How would those most likely be used? Prior analysis suggests these herbs reach peak effectiveness when users burn them and inhale the resulting smoke. Whether or not this increased effectiveness is good for an afflicted individual has yet to be determined. <laughs> Can you analyze the chemical these herbs are treated, treated with? Analyzing complete. Substance appears to be a mix of industrial solvents and various essential oils. Substances include woolly cow dander remover, sprat oil, and starship surface wax. Taste the herbs. Uh, all right, make a note of it and let's move on. Okay, so that's the herbs that we found records about in the computer. Fruitful and productive welcome, sister. I had a feeling you would visit me. I offer a wide variety of productivity seminars. I hope you'll consider taking one. Ah, but I should remember my manners. To what do I owe the pleasure of the special inspector's arrival? Inspector who? I'm on vacation. No matter what anyone says, I'm doing it. Um, how did you know I was an inspector? My disciples come to and from the Grand Colonial, bringing supplies and information. Knowing what happens at the hotel affects my livelihood, after all. With that said, I'd love to involve you in one of my productivity seminars. We should clear you of all those nasty, nasty rumors <laughs> hampering your potential. <laughs> Didn't Halcyon help? I think... <laughs> if I wanted someone peddling Sprat all, I'd buy a Sprat worse. Don't waste my time. I think we'll be a slightly rude to see how she reacts. Didn't Halcyon Helen say you were a hack? Absolutely not. Any statements by Ms. Helen about us were blown out of proportion and altered by the media. In fact, she quite recently... Ah, excuse me. I seem to be remembering something that never happened. 
Whatever the case, I'm sure her speech about us was all a misunderstanding. Okay, she, of course, doesn't want to say that Helen visited her. You know, I have been feeling like my potential is hampered lately. What do you offer? We offer a wide variety of seminars for all your corporate needs. Employees not working hard enough, employees dying too often. It's most likely your managerial humors. And of course, seminars for balancing the energies of your business offices. Interior decorating is much more important for success than many would believe. If any of this sounds at all interesting to you, might I interest you in the first 82 words of our most popular seminar's introduction? Free of charge. Do I want to risk it? Will she actually say 82 words? Free? Sure, I'll hear it. Byzantines live lives fraught with competition, and that competition can be immensely stressful. You must, first of all, find a way to balance your thinking. Think not of bits lost, but of those you have yet to gain. After all, peace leads to productivity, and productivity leads to profit. Though thought alone won't balance you. We have a strict regimen to promote humor clearing. Session attendees stand on burning coals, sit for hours in our productivity smokehouse, and, of course, fast throughout. So, in order to be productive, I need to suffer. Precisely. The barriers within yourself will break down as your skin sweats and blisters, giving the evil humors the proper space to escape. It's my patented method. Okay, so basically it's eels. Causing more damage than help. Um, I'm gonna ask you some questions about Halcyon... I followed your trail to where you dumped something in the wilderness. Oh, really? What did you find there? What did I dump? There was nothing there, but by its proportions, I'd say a body. That all sounds like hearsay, sister. Perhaps your humors are off balance and confusing your sense of justice. Perhaps you could use a seminar. I'm delighted to extend my desire to aid you, sister. How might I assist? You've got some interesting herbs in here. I'm pleased that you noticed. Excellent eye, sister. The compound they're treated with is my own invention, designed to unlock an individual's true productive potential when burned. I can't say any more. Trade secrets, you know. They seem toxic. Toxic enough to probably kill someone. None of my clients have ever complained, so I'm sure they're perfectly safe. Is there anything else? Well, you know, dead clients can complain, so yeah, of course they haven't complained. I'm gonna ask you some questions about Halcyon Helen. Please answer truth truthfully. Oh? I'm surprised. I wouldn't think the two of us would have much to discuss about her. We may have had some terse interactions before her death, which I most certainly regret. But beyond those, well, never mind. What would you care to know? Did you contact Helen after you left the Grand Colonial? I did not. She had no interest in my seminars, and I had no interest in attempting to convert a stubborn actress. <laughs> Why would I have had any cause to engage with her further? Sure you didn't send any messages saying the contrary? Your tone of voice seems to suggest that you have information already. 
Which also suggests you read my terminal. Whatever the case, I didn't care to mention Helen's change in decision because she never showed up. I don't see how it matters. You said you had no further interaction with Helen before her death, right? Yes, that's correct. She made it clear that my seminars were of no interest to her. I saw the message from Helen on your terminal about attending a session. Well, I suppose that does complicate things. Clever work, Inspector. It seems even I can't slide my way out of the trap you've so intricately weaved. I admit it. I killed Helen. By mistake. Helen changed her mind and wanted to attend one of my sessions. I, knowing the importance of the seminar, desired to truly galvanize her. Though not to stop her heart. So when it came time, I chose to double Helen's dosage of productivity-enhancing herbs. I left her to meditate, and when I returned, she was dead. After that, I entered a less than coherent state. One of my disciples, it seems, witnessed me as I dragged Helen's body out into the wilderness. All right, so... First, I'm a little annoyed that they have two conversations that lead to I read your terminal and don't adjust when in one it's revealed that I read the terminal. But, you know, small detail in a good game. But, you know, it just stood out like this was a completely mechanical conversation here. Did you shoot the body at any time? Laws, no. I hate guns. If I ever wanted to kill someone on purpose, I would have used a blunt weapon. Nothing quite like clubbing someone over the head. You're sure Helen was dead? I'm no medical professional, but that certainly seemed the case. Usually my customers at least writhe or mumble after a session. My productivity-enhancing herbs typically do induce sluggishness, but I suppose they must have been enough to do her in if her constitution was truly that weak. So the wilderness, you didn't dump the body at the Grand Colonial. Do you jest? The guests at the Colonial eat no shortage of strange things, but I think corpses are perhaps too strange. The creatures of the wilderness are much less picky. Besides, the hotel is ridiculously far. I couldn't have made it all that way without someone realizing I was dragging a corpse. So that makes sense. We found the track with her footsteps, with uh, a sign of somebody having lain somewhere and gotten up is what we deduced. So... I guess she thinks so basically Woolrich poisoned her um, the profit of profitability got her exposed to this gas uh, Bertie was just you know she broke up with him and he didn't quite get what she was protecting him from which is my theory what happened um so um like three people had motive and opportunity and have done something to her but i don't think either of them killed her is she confessing for someone else <sighs> yeah i'm I'm not sure, like, she seemed oddly forthcoming at some point. Um, but, you know, maybe, you know, being rich and, uh, you know, you know, it being an accident, maybe she expects some sort of leniency because of that. 
Actually, I don't think you killed anybody. Certainly not Helen. I guess because we saw her get back up again. What? Basically. Is this some kind of joke? You're an inspector. It's your job to arrest me, isn't it? Look, if Helen's body wasn't where you left it, she must have awakened and walked away. No. Someone must have moved it after I killed her. One of my business rivals, waiting for me to fall into a false sense of security so they can strike. Her body was found at the Grand Colonial. She was killed there. I don't believe you. I think this is all a trick. You're trying to... to catch me in a lie. Get me to reveal my productivity secrets. The only thing you've done is be completely negligent. No. You can't trick me. I finally discovered what's happening. You've been paid off. Someone else learned that I killed Helen and is going to use that information to blackmail me. You think I'm going to let this injustice happen? Ha! Tell the constable that I killed Helen. It's a thousand times less miserable than whatever my enemies have planned. All right, so... Huh. So I guess she probably wants the PR for this, you know, that that might be, you know, that she can say, "Hey, uh um you know, you know, that way her name stays famous. She's not just the person whose whose seminars were badmouthed by Helen, but she's actually the one who killed a legend." You know, I mean, you know, for having... <sighs> it's, it's hard to... Like, I like none of the dialogue choices I'm giving. I don't want to have her bribe me into arresting her. I don't agree with that, you know. Can't figure you out. I think about whether or not you should be arrested. Whether or not you killed Helen. I think imprisoning you is probably the safest option. The constable's dead, but I guess if you want to be imprisoned, I can oblige you. Let's try that and hope that she reacts to the constable's dead. Yes. One step ahead as always, shadowy corporate figures. You'll never get my secrets. Never. Hmm. Not sure that did anything useful. So, but basically, did we read that one already? Halcyon Helen and Typhon Tim spoke in quiet tones about their next course of action, their voices soft beneath the din of the bar. The duo had just finished the last of the paperwork on Helen's latest job. Filing precise reports always raised her spirits. The trails led us here, and I suspect it will lead us no farther. Soon we will find the source of the dissident's monster, said Helen, a characteristic grin on her face. Let's hope your hunch is correct, Tim murmured, for I suspect their agents will not be far behind us. As if brought on by Tim's supposition, supposition a frightful voice suddenly thundered throughout the room. Near the door loomed a giant and blood-stained man, looking for all his worth like he had fought his way through a manty queen's den. It was Maximilian Mercer, well-feared dissident stooge, and he held two Spaces Choice light pistols in his greasy hands. But yeah, we don't really have any other clues about what she did, or didn't do, or why. She said, I must burn away the old me in order to... Feel myself burning already. Okay. Whatever makes you happy. 
whatever you are. Do, 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 do. No, I'm sorry. Alright. So those huts are all closed to us. Whoop! Oh, oh, oh. So we actually take fire damage in there. Interesting. I thought it to be a lot less. I expected it. Especially, you know, with shoes. So... I have no clue now. So let's go down there, I guess. And find... My guess is that's her secret. Oh, wait. Let's use the melee weapon for once. This will be fun! Keep this up and I won't have any new battle scars. Use this terminal. Experiment logs database. View lab notes. 556 entries found. Warning. 556 of 556 files corrupted. Run recovery routine. Yes. Two files successfully recovered. Access log 2. Every Dynam Chicasius. The parasite seems to seems completely incompatible with the common spread. This is baffling and disappointing. I have a few theories. Spread nucleotides are highly adaptive. Eridanium gigaseus is a half-complete creature. Adaptive mutations in spread physiology rendered a poor host to the parasite. Eridanium gigaseus has a particular and discerning sense of taste and finds spreads accordingly distasteful. Option 2 is ridiculous to me, but not strictly speaking impossible. It could both be true. I'm delirious. We'll delete in the morning. Dr. Amir Zhao, team biologist. Oh, okay, so she may have found lab reports down here. I've completed my final round of total immersion suspension and exposure tests. As expected, Eridanum gigaseus dissolves in acid, burns in fire, and can be disintegrated or otherwise destroyed with N-rays or concentrated blasts of plasma. The creature is vulnerable when alone. However, bonding with a host evokes intensely protective behavior from that host. Safeguarding the parasite becomes the host's primary objective, even to the point of aggression and violence. The creature also seems well-suited to long-term hibernation and immersion in a liquid suspension. Water and low-grade alcohols preserve the creature. Its metabolic systems, such as they are, slow to a halt. Once exposed to a host, the creature emerges from its dormant state and immediately attempts to attach itself to the host's nervous system. Long-term dormancy in an alcohol solution may prove useful to corporate. I'll prepare my report tomorrow. Oh god, that's Spectrum Brown, isn't it? An alcohol solution. Well, just put it in the booze. Continuing my search for more suitable hosts among common fauna. Very promising results from terror rays. Their biological system is well suited to hosting the parasite. My theory? The parasite enjoys exposure to the atmosphere of Eridanus and maybe manipulating the terror rays into more recent, fre frequent and aggressive flight. In every case, the parasite successfully manipulated production of hormones in the host's brain. I don't know how yet. The implications of a parasite manipulating its host troubles me. Its nervous system is exotic and difficult to understand. I can't quite shake the idea that the parasite does not require contact with its host in order to influence its behavior. A suitable large and complex specimen may be able to manipulate the mood of a sentient creature by proximity alone. Maybe. Possibly. These ideas are unscientific and founded on my own anxieties. My nightmares have been muddying my thoughts. Should seek treatment soon. Alright. 
So they're saying that if you have a big slug, um, then uh, it might actually affect your your mood without being attached to you. That's not good. Huh. Nothing in there. Oh, there's one more of you. Oh. The world is beautiful beyond compare. I can see colors I never imagined existed. The sky has a voice and it's singing to me. I see the truth now. I see everything so clearly, so perfectly. The storms of Eridanus are notes in a great cosmic orchestra. The stars are the choir of the universe. And every word they sing is joy. I can't seem to stop smiling. I can't want to... St I don't want to stop smiling. Ever. Okay. You, sir, don't seem to have survived. And I guess you have... Yeah, he has a slug on him. Huh. I have to say... Oh, what's this? Chief of Savages severed index finger. The index finger of the chief of Sav of the savages bitten off by his followers as they finally turned on him, as dissidents always do. Not wanting to permanently injure your injure then celebrity Spencer Woolrich, and lacking the res resources to create an artificial finger for the scene where it was lost, the director of Terror on Monarch had secured to remove the index finger of one of Woolrich's understudies. You now hold it in your hand. Um, everyone seems to be a fan of, uh, of Halcyon Helen stuff in the worst possible way. There's a locked door there. Yes, yes, I know you want to be my friend. It's the friend of the world, as we know it. There's another batch of colored liquids here. I'm kind of scared that that might be related in some way to the puzzle in the pool house. Supervisor clearance required. Accessing this terminal without supervisor clearance will result in an informal reprimand. Open last entry. This is to inform you that Rizzo's has been notified of your expiration due to one or more of the following causes. Violent physical trauma, accidental encounter with local fauna, severe physiological reaction to company and company adjacent products, destruction of company property. After careful review, Rizzo's Office of Human Resources has approved the dissolution of your indenturement contract. In accordance with Rizzo's company law, your closest living relatives will be rewarded the following. One regulation size crate of Rizzo's Spectrum Brown to be delivered within six to eight weeks of product launch. Please note that as a gesture of gratitude for your service, your shipping and delivery fees have been waived. Your work on behalf of the Rizzo's geological survey team has proved invaluable in the development and upcoming launch of Rizzo Spectrum Brown. Thank you for being a part of the Rizzo's family. Yep, that's the confirmation that Rizzo's Spectrum Brown is uh, slug juice. This is an automated message. Responses to this message have been disabled. Supervisor clearance. Has been granted to Ludovico and Zhao. Okay, so only Ludovico knows, knows this. Please note, in accordance with Rizzo's company policy, supervisor clearance is a privilege, not a right. Clearance may be revoked in the event of gross misuse, behavior contrary to Rizzo's company values, or dissident-adjacent behaviors. 
Access usage record supervisor clearance. Yes, we'll hack that, please. Data corruption detected. Usage records records inacceptable. Now generating error report. Error, error report corrupted. Failsafe protocol activated. Now dumping memory contents. Dump successful access. Yes. Isolate passcode. Sorting by linguistic significance. KV 14620. Memorize the passcode. All right. So we figured out a passcode to something. Is that to Ludovico's? computer or something so I wonder what the huge sprats if they didn't want to tempt us why'd they lock it up um how they might be related to this whole thing. Huh, okay. So let's see where this leads us. Okay, that doesn't sound too good. There seem to be a lot of dead people up here. Interesting that if I melee, they melee as well. Parasite egg pod. This vaguely gelatinous egg pod contains a parasite native to Eridana, still in its larval storage. The egg pod pulses at the touch. I guess we'll take that for some reason as proof. Oh, can it host? Mr. Acid. Okay. There's more. Fascinating. Thank you, ladies. Lots of spines and rib cages and things. Not a good sign. Like, is this just random victims? Or is there something... I think they would be more obvious if it wasn't just random victims, you know, like have someone with a oh god there are more parasite eggs here Hmm. 
Alright. There's like all these veins on this side are apparently parasite eggs, aren't they? Huh. I mean, it's pretty. Not sure. It's healthy to be in this cave. Oh, that looks. Oh, transition to Eridanos. Okay. I guess we're walking out the cave somewhere. Wait. Doctor looks like it's seen better days. Amir. Here we go. Should I? This is dumb of me, but Did we get you all. Looks like it. Ooh. All right. But wait, the footsteps. It said of the Prophet of Profitability or Dr. Amir who has supposedly died, didn't it? So... Is that what's going on? Is the Prophet of Profitability really Dr. Amir? Hello, you. They won't try that again. All right. Yeah, we're all kind of a little bit on fire here. This girl is on fire. <clears throat> so we're near that weird pumping station when we come back out, okay? Abandoned Rizzo's bunker. Abandoned restaurant, legal hunting, wilderness exploitation reserve. So where is... Where the prophet was? Is that over there? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Uh, where was it? Anyway, so this is a bit... ...confusing. Oh, what's this? Someone's campfire? Virgil Henderson. What is this? Another soul willing to brave the dangers of the wilderness? How thrilling to find my paramour out here in the wilds. Virgil Henderson at your service. Board surprise auditor and fifth finest shot this side of Halcyon. Delighted to meet you. <laughs> Are you a hotel guest? 
touring the reserve. Where are your guards? Guards? Don't make me laugh. How could I conduct surprise audits with an entourage of companions? I considered establishing a base of operations at the hotel, but feared someone would spot me. Discretion is extremely important for one such as myself. I'm here to conduct a surprise audit of the local Holy Caves, Rizzo's lone leased property in the reserve. It is rather notedly empty. Worse, it seems the evacuation occurred without anyone filing the proper emergency paperwork. Tut tut. The bunker was evacuated forever ago. You're years late. That's why it's a surprise. With all this in mind, there is a small issue. I actually conducted an investigation of this facility several years ago. Since my biometric data might still be registered, it's possible that my entering the facility would not be legally classified a surprise. It's a puzzle to be sure. I might be able to go in and conduct your investigation for you for a price. Hmm. An uncertain suggestion. There are no shortage of legal loopholes for freelance work, but I fear setting my work on the shoulders of someone I've never met before. I may be able to hire you, but let me ask you a question to see if you're fit to represent me first. How much do you know about free market economics? I know that as a freelancer, I'm more cost-effective than dying. Hmm, that's a sufficient amount of market knowledge indeed. I knew you were the right person for the job. <laughs> Head into the holy caves and see what you can find. Keep your eyes open for journals, terminals, data pads, anything that might contain info about the operation. I'm counting on you. Okay. Anything else we need from you? Okay, I guess we can use the holy caves to go back anyway. How did I miss that? Oh, I guess I walked up there. That's how I missed that. Jeez, you, you can't tell me. Yeah, okay. That works. Ah. So let's go back in, I suppose it. And, uh. What do you remember? The footsteps. I think we're someone named Amir. The Caves of Zeal. Alright, I hope they won't be spawning any new enemies for me. Just leave the ones in here that I've already killed. Uh, corporate authorized the name Eridanum Gigasius to describe the life form. Once we determine whether the creature is a viable flavoring agent, confection ingredient, or drinkable after fermentation, Rizzo's company branding department will provide a more consumer friendly name. The life form is a parasite. Dissection reveals an incomplete system of rudimentary internal organs, a half creature, an unfinished accident of orthogenesis. But how can this be? Eridanos is hostile to all life forms. Parasitism implies a rich biological diversity. I theorize that Eridanum gaseous is not truly endemic to the Eridanos planet, but was created in the organic waste of the same terraforming system that operates the atmospheric complex. Continuing my investigation, more reports to follow. Happy to be a part of the Rizzo's family. Dr. Amir Zhao. No, wait, Amir. I don't know. Maybe it's a stupid theory that Zhao is the prophet. I think it was, I'm not sure what name it was. Oh, 
There are a few extra. Slugs and cannons. Ah, that was a good attack, boy. All right. Where's the rest of the... Oh, here you are. All right. We've chopped you all up. Ooh, and there's grenade launcher. Okay. Seems to be a rather generic name, so probably not a special weapon, but hey. Discovered several fascinating qualities of Eridanium Gygasius. First, the parasite's internal biology is, for lack of a better term, highly modular. An elaborate system of organelles, nerve endings, blood vessels, and hormone receptors exist inside its flesh. When attached to a suitable host, the parasite behaves like a biological extension. A metaphor imagining shoving a bypass shunt into a terminal. The shunt is the parasite, the terminal is the host. Second, the parasites... It's it's kind of weird that they uh, um, explain sci-fi term A with sci-fi term B both made up for this game. Um, second, the parasite's nervous system houses a string of kernel-like cells capable of receiving and transmitting neurons. What are the implications? Thought manipulation? Thought control? Third, I've noticed an ambient reverberation in the parasite's nervous systems during periods of intense electrical activity in the Eridanus atmosphere. The larger specimens display a greater sensitivity. There is a direct correlation between the complexity of the parasite's nervous system and its size. Fourth, there seems to be no upper limit to the size of these parasites. I theorize that these caverns may have housed, housed a particularly large specimen. In accordance with company policy, beginning taste ingestion test now. May the law protect my atoms. Oh god. Um, taste ingestion test. It's not a good company policy. I mean, we're on in Hyperion. So, not too surprising, but. Uh, How do I... Oh, we're supposed... I thought we were supposed to get three. Okay, so I guess we're going back out if we can find the way. Although we have him as a map marker, right? So maybe we can just... Go back to the prophet. Though I'm kind of confused whether we get to say anything. Okay. Um, whether we, we... we haven't really gotten any info on who killed Helen yet. Like, who has the gun? So we know... Some more? Is there I anything else? Believe. 
I'm better than everyone. Ah, the sweet safety of imprisonment. I'll no longer have to put up with the miserable vulnerability of this bunker. Finally, relief. What? Okay. The prophet says. Purge the mind of truth. That doesn't sound like a good, good way to go about things. All right. So let's have a quick look. Where that is on the map, once the map loads. Where are we? We're here. Oh, okay, right. It was right here around the corner. Okay, makes sense. So I guess we'll give this to Virgil, see what he has to say. Whoops. That's no fun. Excellent to see you again, my friend. Hope you've been keeping your head high. I think I found everything. What are these? Research data pads? Hmm. Not quite what I expected. Let's see what they say. Hmm. Parasites, caves, thought control. He did what now? Well, it doesn't look like any of this is in violation, but it is disturbing. And disturbing a surprised auditor is as foul as failing to file proper paperwork. Rizzles shall pay dividends for my psychological damage. Here's your reward, my friend. Your contributions to the field of surprise auditing shall not go forgotten. All right. <laughs> That's one way of uh, handling a situation like that. You've learned that Helen disparaged the prophet. I need to find and interrogate the Prophet of Profitability regarding her involvement with Halcyon Helen's murder. Prophet runs... Yeah, we did that. I'm not quite sure if the quest didn't clear here or what. Huh. Or whether we should have said something else and thereby... Huh. Anyway, I guess this is where we'll take our break, or rather, where we will stop for tonight. Um, I hope you enjoyed it so far. I'm a bit confused, though. Like, why... Why is this mission kind of half there? Well, um, anyway, um, huh, um, let me just see here, um, There. This is what confused me for a moment. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully we will be able to wrap this up next time. I'm curious, really, what's going on here. Um, because it almost feels like we didn't actually... Um, like we didn't actually resolve anything. We know that several people have tried to kill her. 
But we haven't found anyone with a smoking gun yet, and a literal smoking gun it is. So, uh, that's a little odd. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, we'll find out next time. Thank you. Have a great week. See you next Sunday again on 5 p.m. Um, CEST, Central European Summertime, and 8 a.m. PST, PDT rather, because they're on Daylight Savings Time as well. Um, <laughs> okay, um, see you then. Have a great week, and uh, bye-bye. Thank you.